it's Katie, professional makeup artist and founder of Beauty and the Boutique.com. Okay, today I'm going to teach you all my top tips and tricks for looking good on Zoom or whatever you're using for your digital virtual meetings. So I haven't completed the look yet, just in case you're thinking, I don't want to look like that. I'm going to share with you how on screen now the finished results. And now I'm going to talk you through exactly how to achieve a really natural, pretty fresh look that presents your best, your best self to camera, but in a natural looking way. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. I'm filming this on my laptop on Zoom um, so that it gives the most kind of real representation possible. Now, before we get started, I want to talk you through some tips just to help you before you even start to even think about makeup for Zoom, about how you position your, your laptop or your computer or whatever you're using to, to record. So first things first, it's always best if you're filming in uh, the daytime to have the to sit in front of the window and have the light flood your face this is the best lighting for you well for all of us because it kind of minimizes any dark shadows on our face it helps us look a little bit more rested without even any makeup um, let me show you an example if I move the computer and I now have the window on my side you can see this part of my face is lit but now on this side of my face it's looking a little bit more tired furthermore if i keep turning it round you're going to see that i my under eye circles start looking darker and gradually i start looking more and more tired and the more i move this into the light have the light flooding my face the more kind of rested I look. So that's a really good tip there. The next tip I'm gonna share with you is how you position, sorry, I hope I'm not making you feel seasick, Ooh, is how you position your camera. So for example, if I put the camera down, this is gonna focus on the chin area. Now, if you want your kind of angles of your face to look the best, then I suggest you elevate your computer. And to do that, very simple, stack of books underneath, and already you can see that this is looking a little bit more flattering because I've got the camera at eye level. So that's a good tester there. If the camera is below your eye level, it's it's going to focus kind of on the chin area and in particular, you know, if you go like that, that, that's not so flattering. So let's move the camera up to eye level and that's much more flattering. So pile of books does the trick. Another thing to focus on is the position of your screen. So if I move my screen towards me, again, the focus here is around here, not, not too flattering. But if I move the screen up, back a little bit, so it's at a good right angle, that's much more flattering. Now, aside from makeup, um, what is very good for Zoom is um, accessories around the neck. Now, you don't have to go to town on this. This is a little necklace that I actually picked up in a charity, charity store, I think it was about five pounds. But I want to show you how just putting on something around your neck, it already starts to kind of frame this area because this is what people are seeing. Now, aside from this, I've got a t-shirt on and then I've got jogging bottoms. So necklace doesn't go with the jogging bottoms but no one needs to know that and i've also put a little headband on just because i think it adds a bit of interest but still um i want to look casual but i want to look slightly put together if it's um a work meeting then you might have your hair a little bit more styled but i do recommend 
it's something of interest around your neck or a nice collar to what you're wearing it just really helps elevate and gives your look a little bit more of a frame around this area okay let's get started to the makeup now assuming that you have your face moisturized and you have moisturizer all over your face including under your eye area too I'm going to go ahead and put on a primer. Now the primer that I'm going to be using, now these products I expect you won't have at home, but I'm hoping that you might have something similar. Um, or if you don't have something similar, this is a look that you can skip out bits and you'll still get a, a really lovely, lovely look digging around what you already own at home. If you are interested in anything that I'm using, I will put the link somewhere for you to read about what I'm using. So the first thing I'm going to use is this primer. Now, primers, if you if you always hear about primers and you've never really thought to wear one, um, they're good because if you like to wear makeup, they kind of act as a barrier between your skin and your makeup, which means it helps your makeup stay on a little bit longer because it stops your kind of skin eating up the makeup. I don't know about you, but if you ever get to put makeup on in the morning and then you get to lunchtime and you think, Where's the makeup go? <laughs> my skin's eating my makeup. A primer helps stop your skin eating the makeup. Now this primer in particular, if I just pump a little bit out, this primer in particular is really lovely because you can see as I start to apply it, it starts to give my face a really lovely sheen. Now I'm just going to apply the makeup to this side of my face because I want you to see the difference that this makes. And what's great about getting a sheen on your face for a Zoom call is it helps your skin look less matte and it gives your skin just a luminosity. It just highlights the high points of your, of your bone structure and gives your face more dimension. Next up, we are going to use a little bit of coverage. Now, I'm not going to wear a foundation because I want skin to look real and natural. I'm not saying that foundation doesn't look real, but I think there's some clever little techniques I can teach you to help your skin look really rested and really a little bit more perfected, but still look like your skin and like you're not really wearing any makeup. So to do that, I'm going to use this Veil Complexion Fix. And it does exactly what it says on the tube. It, it kind of fixes your complexions in the areas that need a little bit more coverage. Now, I must tell you, because I don't have a mirror as so I'm doing any of this, I'm literally looking <laughs> at you and then trying to see what I'm doing on screen. So forgive me if I take my glaze away from you, which is another top tip because it's so tempting, isn't it, when we're on a Zoom call to kind of look at ourselves as I'm, we're talking like I'm doing now. But you'll notice now when I look at you, it's much more engaging. It helps the person you're talking to feel much more connected to you, which is really important when we're not in the same room. Okay. But forgive me when I don't look at you because I'm just trying to see what I'm doing with my makeup. Okay, so I'm going to twist up the product. Okay, now you will know the areas of your face that you feel needs a little bit more um, help. <laughs> and for me, it's my under eye um, and, you know, other parts of my face, but mostly it's my under eye area. So firstly, I'm gonna concentrate on this. Now, most of us, when we have dark circles, the, the real intensity of the darkness is in the inner corner of the eye here. So it's always best to focus on here first and then blend and feather out to almost nothing because you can see the skin here doesn't need much coverage at all. And often, um, if we have like smile lines here, the least amount of makeup we can put there, the better, because that way it will just won't emphasize any fine lines in your, in your makeup. I'm just gonna place a few little dots on the inner corner there, like so. And this is what you can do at home with your concealers or your foundations. I'm showing you a way that you don't have to put foundation all over your face. And it might be that you try it and you think, oh, actually, I prefer a full face of foundation. 
but I just want to show you something different for you to experiment with because makeup is about trying new things and just having fun. You can't go wrong. Okay, I'm going to use my fing ring finger. Now, I use my ring finger to pat in because if I was to just start kind of wiping the product, all it does is wipe it away. And you can see already how much more rested this eye is looking to this eye, but it still looks very natural. The great thing about this product is that it doesn't settle into any fine lines and it looks very, very natural. It's quite a sheer to, it's a sheer coverage, but you can build up the coverage to be a little bit more heavier. You know, with, what I recommend with this product is it needs uh, an eye cream underneath or a primer of some sort. So I will just put another layer on because I think, mm, I'll just put a little bit more coverage there. Now, you've done your under eye, haven't put any here. Next up, we're going to apply this product. So remember, you could do this for your foundation or your existing concealer at home. We're going to put a little bit round our nose here. This is kind of like the nostril C. And the reason we do this is because often around our nostrils is where we get a little bit of discoloration, a bit of redness. If you find it easier, you can put a little bit on the back of your hand and just go from your hand as a little palette. Then, I'm going to take a little bit from the back of my hand here and I'm going to go down the centre of my nose. Blend in and then just pat on the corners. Now the reason I'm doing this is because this helps give my nose a little bit more definition. Plus, you'll notice that when I finish, it's going to give actually this side of my face the look of like I've got a full face of makeup on and I don't. I'm just... I'm just perfecting key areas because when we look at a person's face, particularly on camera, we're kind of just focusing on this part of the face. We don't really see the sides of the face. It's all about here. And of course, when you turn, but you'll notice that the, it really picks up around here. So we're just gonna work on this part of the face and perfecting the chin area. Again, I'm not picking it everywhere just kind of in the middle of the chin because I think when we go on to zooms I think it feels a lot more easy and natural to look like we haven't we look well presented but we haven't made like loads and loads of effort it's just about looking you know nicely presented and the best version of yourself um okay so then middle of my forehead and again a little bit more product on Kind of just do a few dots and then massage in. If you put too much on, like I have there, then just get a clean finger and feather out at the edges. Okay, it's coming together. Now, if you suffer from any redness on your cheeks, um, very easy, we will add colour back into our cheeks, but perhaps if you have rosacea or anything like that, something that bothers you perhaps, then you can draw little whiskers on. These are my favourite kind of whiskers. These are what I call anti-redness whiskers. So you go like that. You can do this with your foundation, your concealers that you already have at home, and then you just pat in. So you can see already just how much more rested this side of my face is looking compared to this side, but it doesn't actually look like I'm wearing any makeup. So that's a thumbs up. Okay, last place we're gonna apply it is on our brow bone here. Because if I just make my brow bone look a little bit more perfected, in a second when I show you what I do to my brow, it's going to further just help my brow look a bit more neater. Lovely. Now the lovely thing with this pen is you don't need any powder to set it, it sets itself. So that means it looks even more like my skin. Okay, next up, I'm just gonna wipe my hands. Next up, we are going to do our brows because when we're on camera, if we can perfect, sorry, no, I don't wanna say the word perfect because I don't think it's about perfection. I think it's just about creating more structure to our face. 
Um, and that's exactly what I want to show you. If we can create a little bit more structure to our face. So when I'm talking about structure, I'm going to talk about our, our eyes and our lips and our bone structure. And I'll come on to the rest of that in a little bit. But you'll see at the moment, my my brows are, well, they're, I've got nothing on them, but I just want them to look a little bit more defined. This is a great technique to do for giving yourself a subtle eye lift. This is the product I'm using. It's uh, There's two brow colors here, and then these colors are for, for the, um, the brow bone. Um, now, assuming that you have a brow color or a brow pencil, the same techniques I share with how I achieve this brow look, you can apply to your use of your pencil too, because I want you to focus not really on the products I'm using, but the techniques I'm doing. And that way it will help you best with the makeup that you own. However, if you do want to see what I'm using, I will make sure the links are somewhere for you to read about what I'm using. Okay, so within this palette, you get a little angled brush. You might have one like this at home, or you might be using your pencil, or you might be using another little brush, perhaps it's a bit like that. Doesn't matter, I'm just gonna show you where to apply color. Doesn't matter what the product is, it's about where you apply the color. Okay, so my top tip for choosing a color for your brow is to go as near to your brow color as possible. If you want your brows to look more defined, then go one shade darker than your natural brow color. Um, or you could look at the like, kind of roots of your hair if you feel like you want a, a kind of definite look. Now I want my brows to be just a touch darker, so I'm gonna go one shade darker than my brow. I wouldn't recommend going much more than one shade darker, um, as it can make your brow look a little bit too heavy, but that might be a look that you wanna go for, and in which case, Go for it. No rules, you do what makes you feel happy. Okay, so I'm gonna tap off excess for my brush. Now this is brush comes free with this. I'm not gonna use loads of fancy brushes in this video because you might not have them at home. I'm just gonna show you the techniques to use with what you might already have at home. Okay, so when you're applying color to your brow, the first place you want to apply it is in the most gappiest part. So for most of us, it's kind of around this part here. So first of all, we are going to strengthen up that part of the brow. And to do that, we're simply going to dab the color on if it's a shadow. And if you're using a pencil, you're gonna use tiny little feathery strokes. The lighter touch you, you use, the better the less pressure you use in your application, the better, because it's always easier to build up on the color than to have to wipe off and start again. So excuse me as I don't look at you, because I'm trying to see what I'm doing in the, in the computer. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of color on the base here. So this is giving the base of my brow just a little bit more structure. And you can see the motion I'm doing I'm just dabbing the color. Dab, 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 dab. Okay, now already you can see on this brow how much more shape it's already getting compared to this brow. I'm now going to take the shadow or your pencil actually into the hair itself. Okay, because I don't want this part of the brow to look any thicker because if I make that look thicker, my brow is gonna look heavier. So I can make this part look thicker, but by making this part a little bit thicker and keeping this, you know, thinner, it's gonna help give my arch more, much more definition. Because if I was to make this all the same thickness, it's not gonna give me as much lift to my arch. You'll notice I'm holding my pinky finger here because it helps give my hand stabilization. And this is great if you have like, a shaky hand or if you're not too confident in makeup it's like your little stabilizer you know like when we used to when we learned to ride a bike you'll notice I'm just gently feathering in color okay so already this is getting a lot more definition a lot more shape I'm you notice on the back of my hand again I'm tapping off any excess I'm gonna put a little bit more here and this time 
I'm now gonna go into the actual hair, the body of my brow. I'm gonna follow it along just to where it starts to arch. Now, I'm not gonna go much more in the arch because I wanna keep that nice and kind of slim lined. But I do feel like I need a little bit more brow here because you'll notice that really my brow should start. If you were to hold a pencil on your brow from your corner of your nostril and hold it vertically, you'll see that that really there is where your brow should start. So that's a great little tip. And then if you were to hold the pencil diagonally across your pupil, across your eye, that's where your art should be. So that's a really good little tip if you're shaping your brows at home. If you feel that you've applied too much, then you've got two options. You can take a Q-tip or a little cheapy brush like this and just smudge in the color to soften it. And if you feel that you've gone too much over, like you've made it too thick, you can just get a little wipe and just wipe any excess off. But hopefully you can see how much more defined this side of my brow is looking. And I always recommend just sweeping your brow upwards. You can do this with a clean mascara, old clean mascara wand or even a toothbrush. I don't have that at hand, um, so I'm just using it with my finger. I'm just trying to show you the easiest way to, to get this look without using lots of fancy things. Next up, we are going to add a little bit more kind of definition to our face, but in a very subtle way. Now, this isn't really contouring. Um, I want to do something much, much easier. And I'm hoping that you might have a bronzer at home. So if you do, this is a way that you can softly sculpt your features with a bronzer. And to do that, as opposed to using a big kind of bronzing fluffy brush, Get a slightly smaller brush like this. You could even do it with um, a blush brush, for example, something that's a little bit smaller. And you're going to take your bronzer and I always cap off excess. I don't want to apply too much. Then I'm going to apply this again, just on this side of my face. I'm going to apply it just around my hairline. So you kind of want to hug your hairline and you're almost drawing like a little C from the middle of your forehead down to your ear here. Okay, next up, apply a little bit more, tap off, and I'm going to apply this from, do the fish face like this, Feel that hollow there, and you're gonna go from the kind of where this hollow is, well, you're actually gonna start here, but you're gonna go down to this hollow. If it helps to do this, you can pull this face, and you go down to the hollow. Now, the reason I'm not starting here and going upwards is because I could end up with too much bronze here and it looked too splodgy. So it's always easier to do this, and it looks much more natural if you go from the hairline down because it's much easier to get. It looks more natural to have more depth of color around the hairline, because that's kind of the natural shading and contours of the face. You can see already, you can build this up, that my cheekbone is looking slightly more defined. Now, if you fi find that you've done this and it's looking too much like a stripe, very easy to fix, just fuzz the line. To do that with your brush, you just fuzz. You see? Fuzzy, fuzzy, fuzzy. Ooh, cool. Bone structure is coming along. Now you can do as much or as little as you like. I'm gonna put a bit more on. It's fun. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, now to help give ourselves a bit more structure around the jawline, very similar thing. Tap in, tap off. Now this time, we are going to place the, 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 the brush 
here, slightly under our jawline, but kind of hugging our jawline. And we're gonna take it right the way across. Now, it's important to not use a bronzer that's too dark, so it just does look natural to your actual skin. But to help make it look even more natural, we're gonna take this color and we're gonna fuzz it down so it almost goes into nothing. But hopefully you can see on this side of my face, sorry, the light's going now, you can see it's looking a little bit more defined and has a bit more structure to this side. So this is the side without, this is the side with. Now another little tip coming up for you, take your bronzer, take your brush, put it in, tap off, then you're going to squeeze your brush to make it thin, so make it thin, then you're just going to hold the brush and you're going to do a little wiggle into your socket, so your socket is between your brow bone, kind of the soft part of your eye, you're just going to go back and forth like a little windscreen wiper, let me show you. Doesn't have to be neat. It's all about just getting like a diffused soft colour. So you'll notice when I'm doing it, look, I'm just doing like little wiggly, wiggly, wiggly motion. And you can see, hopefully, gosh, the light's going, I'm so sorry. Can you see? It's given a very subtle eyeshadow look. Doesn't really look like I'm wearing any eyeshadow, but it's just helped give my eye a little bit more definition very subtle it's all about looking very we don't want to really look like we've got loads of makeup on just want it to look very natural okay so another little tip coming up for you if you have a creamy eyeshadow at home um or perhaps a concealer that is much let's a few shades lighter than your skin tone go and grab it because now we're going to use this lighter color on our brow bone here and a little bit there to really make our eyes just look a bit more dazzling. So in this palette, there's like a shimmery shade here and a matte white shade. It doesn't matter, up to you whether you wanna put shimmer on or not, you can use a matte shade. And again, it doesn't have to be a light eyeshadow. You might have a concealer that's a few shades lighter than your skin tone or a foundation. Now I'm going to use my pinky finger just so I can make it really, really easy for you. I'm going to use the she sheeny shade here because I like sheeny shades. I think they, especially on the brow bone and here, it just adds a bit more of a dazzle. Um, and also, we've got quite smooth skin here, so it means that if you do want to wear a shimmery shade, it's not going to highlight any fine lines. The dab on, but don't worry, this looks a bit weird. Don't worry, <laughs> just dab on and then with a the clean finger, just feather and work backwards and forwards. And you can see that just giving myself a bit more definition here. I'm going to do the same, put my finger there, my tear duct area here. Dab on, don't worry if it doesn't look neat, take a clean finger and just press and dab that colour in so it just melts almost into nothing. So next up we are going to go to mascara and I'm going to teach you a really lovely mascara technique that I've used for many years and it really helps get a fuller looking lash without cloggy spidery lashes so it gives you a natural look but it gives you a good amount of volume to your eyes okay so i'm using this mascara here it's a black mascara hopefully you have a black mascara or a brown mascara at home now i'm going to get the wand and i'm going to place the wand right at the root of my lash so it almost feels like it's stamping on the upper water line so if you're going to do this um, be careful if you're wearing contact lenses because you kind of want the feeling as if it's stamping on your upper water line here now the reason i do this is because the more mascara we can get at the very root of our lashes 
the more fuller our lashes are gonna look. Now, often when people apply the mascara, they concentrate on the mid lengths and really start sort of sweeping it all up, sweeping it all up. What happens over time is that you're trying to get this full look to your lashes, but all the mascara is going on the mid length and the ends, and that's what kind of creates the little clogs. So, to start with, you're just going to apply the mascara right on the roots. You know, I'm not doing even any sweeping motions yet. I'm just stamping this right on the root of the lash. Now, it does help if you've got a thin wand like this one, but if you don't have a thin wand, you can still achieve this look. You might find that just a bit more of the mascara goes over your kind of eyelid, but don't worry, because just wait for that mascara to dry and then you just wipe it off with a Q-tip. I mean, even I'm gonna get stuff on my eye from doing this, so I'll have to quickly go and grab a few tip in a minute. Another top tip when you're applying mascara. It's so tempting, isn't it, for us to kind of look like that, look down. If you can keep your head straight on, but keep your eyes looking down as you apply, it gives you a little bit more control, as opposed to if I go like that, then I end up putting more on the tops of the lashes and up here. If I just hold my head straight and I look down and I gently just bounce the wand onto the roots, you will see, I've not even swept the color up yet. Can you see how full those lashes look? And I don't even have any on the tips. Sorry, I'm back, I'm unprepared. I don't have Q-tips and I've also brought a mirror with me this time because I must admit, I'm finding it really hard to do my makeup in the computer screen. <laughs> oh dear. Right, okay, so I've got a little bit here, so I'm just gonna wipe off any excess mascara. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at my mirror. I can't, I can't help it. I can't do it all in the screen. Okay, we are getting there. So now, as you can see, my lashes look really soft and fluttery. There's nothing on the tips there, nothing at all. Not got any mascara on the tips. It's all on the base of the lash, but look how much fuller my lashes look. This is a mascara technique that you are going to love for natural, full looking lashes. Now, if you really want to extend on the length, then you take your wand and do just one or two coats up towards the tips of the lashes. It's that easy. Okay, for the bottom lashes, it's very similar. You take your mascara wand, and this time you're gonna look down slightly, and you're gonna bounce the wand right on the roots of the lower lash line. So I do little bounces, and again, what this does, it gives you definition to your lashes, but without looking like you're wearing lots of mascara. So it helps frame your eyes, but so your eyes and your mascara just look really natural. Now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna create a really pretty, lip look and just add a lovely kind of youthful glow to our cheeks. It's really up to you if you want to wear lipstick. You might want to just wear a little bit of gloss or a little bit of lip, I can't speak, or a little lip balm, whatever you feel comfortable with. However, I like to wear a lipstick when I'm on screen. I want you to look for a color that perhaps you already own that's a few shades darker than your natural skin tone, but that has kind of like, elements of your skin tone in it. So I'm gonna go for a pinky, browny, beigey, pinky shade. So I'm gonna apply this and you'll notice it's kind of, I call this like a statement nude color. People could think this was my natural lip color. Now, if you have a color um, that's a little bit too dark, and you think, oh, it's kind of like a statement nude, but it's a bit too dark, then put it on, then, Grab your concealer or your foundation, anything that you have at, ha at hand. I'm gonna use this again. I'm gonna tap it onto the back of my hand. And then I'm just gonna dab this in the center of my lips, like that, in the top there. Then press my lips together. And this is gonna make the lip color look even more natural. It kind of gives a little bit of an ombre effect to the lips, which makes the lips look fuller and more juicier. 
So it looks slightly more dark around here, but slightly, ever so slightly lighter in the middle just ever so slightly. If you're someone that wants to further define your shape of your lips, so it might be that you want to make your lips look fuller, or perhaps you have feathering around your lip line, then a lip liner can be your best friend. And if you haven't used one in ages, see if you've got one in the back of your beauty cabinets because they really are brilliant and I love lip liners now you can apply a lip liner before or after you apply your lipstick but top tip if you haven't got a lip liner that goes perfectly with your lip color apply your lipstick first then apply the lip liner over the top and you'll find that it kind of smudges into your lip color a bit bit better so i'm using this lip pencil here now this pencil color goes with pretty much every lipstick i own so it's a really good one um, so I'm, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to have to look in my mirror when I do this because otherwise I'm going to just draw on a face like the Joker. Okay, one sec. So again, I'm going to use my pinky finger to stabilise my hand. I'm going to start off in my cupid's bow. To the bottom lip. Again, starting in the middle, pinky finger is my little stabiliser. Right, I'm going to go to the light, go to the light, because I'm running out of light. Okay, so can you see, just ever so slightly, I've, I haven't really overlined my lips much, but a touch, and I've just made them look slightly more juicy at this side. And I've also helped strengthen the kind of lip line. So this, I mean, a liner that's kind of like a pinky brownie colour. If you have a colour like that, it will work with so many of your lipsticks. Um, but as I say, if you've got a lip liner that isn't the perfect colour for your lipstick, then just apply it over the top and it will soon kind of just merge into your lipstick colour. Next, for your complexion. Now, assuming you found quite a lovely statement nude lipstick, or if you haven't found one, perhaps you've got a couple of colors you can mix together. Perhaps you've got a dark color and a light color of lipstick at home. You could mix the two together in a little pot and create your own statement nude color. But with that color, I want you now to, with a clean finger, dab it into the lipstick and you're going to apply it to your cheeks. Because by doing this, um, if you're someone that's never worn blush before, it's a really foolproof way of adding just a touch of colour to your cheeks and making sure it still goes with the rest of your makeup. So it's not really going to look like a blush, it's just going to look like a hint of colour that's on your face. And because we've already got the colour on our lips, it helps it all kind of merge together and just look even more natural. Okay, so to do that, you're going to smile and you're going to go down from your pupil and kind of find your cheeky bit here. So you go, doo -doo 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 -doo, cheek, cheek, cheek. And then you're just gonna pat. Don't worry if it comes out dark, it's normal. Just gonna quickly just rub it in circular motions up towards the top of the ear. And it's just going to give a hint of color. I'm gonna put a little bit more on. Go, mm -mm. And if you want more of a kind of glowy look, then apply more to the apple of your cheek and if you want more of a kind of lifted look then apply a little bit more towards the towards the ear kind of sweeping upwards better to blend downwards than to blend upwards because if you blend up you could take it underneath your eyes so just blend kind of downwards and across so that gives a really beautiful just very natural look to my cheese With this primer that I have, because um, it's got quite a sheen to it, and I'm hoping that you might have something at home that has a sheen, so as I massage this in, you'll see, as it sort of catches, oh, I hope you can see on here, as it catches the light, it has a really nice sheen to it. So I want you to see if there's anything in your beauty cabinets that has a lovely sheen to it. If you can't find anything, you might even have a glip gloss. A clear lip gloss, get that and you can just dab it on the tops of your cheekbones. I'm going to use this, I'm going to put a little bit onto the back of my hand. I'm going to pat this on the top of my cheekbone, kind of going around like a little C here. 
because this is gonna just further help my cheekbone to pop, as you can see. It just looks really lovely. And I think when you're on camera, as you move, it adds a really nice definition to your face. So put it round here. You can layer up if you want more. But I think when you're on camera and you're talking, it's just really nice to have that kind of bit of sheen to your cheekbones. Another place you can put this is just down the center of the nose. Don't take it right to the tip. You just want it kind of three quarters of the way down. Blend with a clean finger. And that's further gonna help just give your nose just a touch more structure. I'm gonna also apply it to my brow bone, just to give my brow bone an extra bit of sheen. Again, I use this under my makeup and I'm now using over the top of my makeup. That's the fantastic thing about this primer. But hopefully, as I say, you've got something at home that is sheeny. Okay, so one last tip coming up, one last tip. That is eyeliner. Now I've not put that on while I was doing my eyes because for some, this might be enough, but for others, they might just want a little bit more definition around their eyes. So I want to show you how you can wear um, liner in a really natural way that doesn't look like, like you're wearing liner. Now, I recommend to do that, you use a, a brown or a gray or black is okay, but something a bit softer than a black. So I'm gonna use this pewter shade here. So it's kind of like a grey, navy colour. And I'm just going to apply this on the top of my lid, right into the roots of my lash lashes. And again, notice how I'm holding the pencil. I've got my stabilizer with my little pinky finger. Now the trick here is not to worry about getting a straight line. You're just gonna get the colour on. And then before the liner sets, you're going to take your pinky finger, you're just going to smudge it. And what that smudging does is it smudges in any jagged edges that you haven't applied too neatly. And it just looks like a hue of colour on the top of your eyelid. I'm just going to perfect that in the mirror. It's that easy, but you can see just by adding that liner, it's really just made my eyes slightly more emphasized. So I've completed both sides of my face. This is the finished look. And if you want to know any more tips and tricks from me, then be sure to visit beautyintheboutique.com and I'll put the links to everything that I've used somewhere around here. But I'm hoping that you perhaps have quite a, a lot of similar stuff that you can already use at home. If you do want to find out more about what I've used, then links will be around somewhere. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye.